Hello. Today I'm going to talk about version 4 of the MACD Moving Average Combination. Now, as you can see here, and I'm going to zoom this in to make it easier, we have the sine wave moving average or sine weighted moving average of version 1. And we have the momentum moving average of version 2. So we are going to combine these two moving averages. So let's get into these signals. As you can see, we are using confirmation bias. And that is how we drive both moving averages within the same indicator. So let's get down to the basics. Here is the first moving average, the sine weighted moving average. All of the settings exactly as you have seen from version 1. Now I've covered this in version 1, so I'm not going to go through every single detail here. Now let's move to the confirmation moving average, which is from version 2. As you see, everything here exactly from version 2, except it's in the confirmation moving average. So I have combined version 1 sine weighted moving average with version 2 momentum moving average and of course the version 1 uses the 37 rule so here you are the complete setup for combining versions 1 and 2 of the moving averages Everything from version 2, exactly as it shows, and everything from version 1, exactly as it shows, all driven by the confirmation bias system. So let's get out of this and go to the MACD settings. These were pulled from version 2. Now, of course, MACD pulls in the signal line from the moving averages. All of this is exactly the way it shows up from version 2. Again, I'm not going to go through every single detail because I covered that within the first two videos of this process. Now, I am not using confirmation, so nothing here matters. And I am using the signal count. I did keep that from version 1. So now that we have the combination of MACD and moving averages, that is, we have the Rule 37 sign weighted moving average, and we have the momentum high-low band moving average. We know from the initial video that started this conversation of the analysis that this has a 62.5% rate of success. I know from versions 1, 2, and 3, from previous videos that this is pretty much on par a good system to work with. Now I'm going to take it to the next level. I'm not going to waste time paper trading this combination because I already know from the first two paper traders version 1 and version 2 performance is pretty decent. So 
So I'm going to take this 62.5% success rate to a 90% success rate. Now, this does require a more advanced subscription than the Pro. So if you don't have the Pro, stop here, put this in the paper trader, and see how well it works. If you do have the next level that supports two indicator on indicators, then it's time to go to the next level. And it's time to look at this in a bigger way. So we're going to add dollar cost averaging. Now normally dollar cost averaging adds to the number of purchases. Today, I'm going to show you a whole new way of looking at dollar cost averaging, a way that is driven solely by this strategy. And this really applies to any strategy you want. In the Jackrabbit support server, I talked about using JR Lang as a driving force for this particular type of dollar cost averaging that I'm going to show you here. So first, let's bring this up, go into settings. Right off the bat, we want to feed in the MACD signal line. Now, here is where the world changes. This is pretty much cookie cutter, three commas, trailer, profit trailer, crypto hopper style. Nothing new there, it works. We're going to go to the next step. Change your buy method to strategy. Change your sell method to strategy. You now have a pure organic DCA solely driven by the strategy. Purchases will not take place unless the buy signal is below the deviation. Cells will not take place unless the sell signal is above the deviation. Now I'm going to go through and add my usual accoutrements that I personally believe make this a more appropriate system for what I feel is a given success rate to the market. So I wanted to sideways break after one day with the exception that sideways breaker will now only be based on the strategy. Period. Not arbitrary purchases. The strategy itself must show a buy signal for the sideways breaker to take a new entry. Now the exit point. After 37 purchases, when it makes the 38th, I won out. I'm done. This is a loss. Write it off. Be done. Move on. This is important that you take a lot of careful attention back testing this because this can really wreck your profits and you really need to think about exactly where you're at within the scope and scale of your profits. You do not want to see these very often at all. That means you need to search each and every time frame the trading view gives you and count the number of losses. For my own personal risk assessment, if I see more than two losses, I don't trade in that coin because I know I'm going to have to recover those losses through trading. So within one 12 month period, if I take more than two losses, I don't trade in that coin. That fits my risk assessment and my budget. So let's start right away by looking at the chart. 
the cyan line means it's out of trade. This means it's 10% above the last average. The cyan line is the last average from the last transaction. This is where you will place your new signals on the DCA module. It is important that you pay careful attention to the fact that this must be your last module. This is the terminus of the entire indicator on indicator chain. It does not produce a signal line. It only receives a signal line. So make sure you use your dollar cost averaging module only at the end. And now we actually take what we see here and we scan the chart. Find the last mm -hmm. transaction. Figure out the number of days. Calculate your risks. Calculate your budget. Because this is a surgical strategy. When you use dollar cost averaging and strategy method for both buying and selling, you are using only the signals to drive the entire process. So right here, cyan line is out of trade. It doesn't get back into the trade until after the drop when it hits the bottom here. Now this stayed in the trade roughly one day. It got out of the trade here and notice it didn't get out right above the average. It got out on the basis of the signal. Now there is a dark side to this. If you end up with a price action that exceeds your average and then drops back down below average without a buy signal, it is not going to sell. The advantages are by doing this though, you are going to have a significant higher level of profit when you do get that sell signal above your take profit boundary. Here is another example. Buy signal took place here, but this is a sideways breaker signal. Now notice here we go right above the average, but we don't sell to way up here. So if you look at this, you see a huge amount of profit above the average line. So be aware of your risks. Also, the other thing here is so far you're seeing things that are pretty much within one day. So a position size of 10 or $11 will work out well. But if you start getting into higher time frames, and this may actually be an example, we have one, two, Okay, so in, so two positions comes in the market here, picks up a sideways breaker here, and is out of the market in two days. So basically, I'm going to say 10, 20, 1% profit, you're looking at 20 cents. Not a lot of money to break even on if this is your only trade. But now if this was $100 profits, then you're looking at 1% off of 100 for two trades, one, two, $2 profit for two days. Now you do that throughout the month, that might start making a break even point. So as you can see, your budget is much more constrained. Even with a coin like BAT, much more and significantly constrained budget. Unlike version one that has a very high propensity for retracement, using a strategy-based dollar cost averaging paradigm reduces the number of trades significantly. As you can see, 
just from this charting process already, how much these trades have been reduced and how much of a gap there is between trades on the basis. For example, here is the last sell point, and this is the beginning of June. So you're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 days with no activity whatsoever. None on this coin. So that can be a very big consideration for your break-even point. What you see here within a roughly 24-hour period, it gets in and it gets out. So the amount of funds that you use for the single coin is very limited. But the number of trades for this coin is also very limited. So this is something that you would want to use with more than one coin to make sure you can reach your break-even point. And that is important to consider when you're looking at your back testing. You want to always be aware. Here's another example. This particular trade went one, two, I'm going to say three days. So on three days, you're looking at 20 cents. If you just did a simple, or not even that, 10 cents. If you did a simple $10 transaction. Now, if this is a $100 position, then you're looking at roughly $1. Not getting there very quickly, but very solid results. So always weigh out your position size with your risk assessment and your budget and make sure your initial position size is appropriate to the number of days you're trading. If you have, with just 3C, a $40 break-even point, you're going to need a lot of these trades to really break even. So you're going to have to base your position size appropriate to your break-even and your profit margin. So right off the bat, if you can do 10 cent trades, you're looking at 10 trades per dollar, you're looking at 400 trades per month just to break even. That may not be viable with just a simple $10 position size. You may need to look at trading a lot of coins to really make this efficient. But it does take a very surgical approach to the market. And as you can see, you're looking at roughly a 90% success rate. Yes, you heard me correctly. I said 90%. Now this looks like 100%, but realistically. Retracement and other factors make this a minimum 2% loss probability. The fact that TradingView can move out of sync with your trading platform is at least a 3 to 5% probability. So just off the top, without human error, you're looking at a 10% probability of failure. Now, human error. You underestimate your budget, you don't plan for enough budget, or you overextend your budget will all take effect and have a negative effect on this process. How much that percentage weighs in, that could actually, if you really overextend your budget, that could have a 90% failure rate, particularly with a situation like Black Thursday. You need to be careful and take your time with your assessments. Now, while this does have roughly a 90% success rate, you can be your own worst enemy for this strategy. This is a hallmark winning strategy. It is one of the most sound, it is one of the easiestly analyzed, and it is one of the most competent strategies. Short of a market apocalypse, it will always come out on top. 
but you need to be prepared for situations like this right here. One, two, three, four, five days, no trades, nothing on this coin. Six days, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen days, no trades, none on this coin. So for thirteen days, this system sits and does nothing. You don't earn a penny. But you still have to pay for your bot. You still have to pay for your TradingView subscription. You still have a monthly minimum overhead of $40. And I emphasize minimum. If you've paid for Profit Trailer, or crypto hopper your minimum overhead is going to be significantly higher now while this does work on a larger scale for more coins you must be aware of what that scale is and take your time planning your budget because right now just on this one coin you will not break even. Even though every single trade it makes is successful, you are still going to lose because you will not make your break even. If you trade only with the minimum position size of $10 or $11. Even with this one, two entry points, let's say $20, $0.20 cent profit. Two entry points, let's say $100, $2 profit. That's a little better, but it's still not going to get you to the home base for just this one coin. $500, $500, $1,000, $1, at 2%, $20 at 2 percent 20 profit, a couple of these, and you break even. Now you're starting to make traction. Here we go with another long run of this coin not trading. Oh, actually, this is uh, a very quick in and out, but still, one, two, three, four days, no trades, no money coming in. Here we get another quick cycle in and out. As you can see, this does really well. This takes the whole process to a whole new level. Now, let's get out of this and let's go to the top 13 coins. The coins that I'm always telling you you should trade on. The coins above 1 billion market cap. You can easily trade all 13 coins with this strategy at minimum position sizes. Will you break even? I don't know. You will have to actually count and figure out mathematically your break even point on the basis of each and every coin. Some coins will perform better than others. And this is still just within the five minute time frame. As you go to different time frames, you will see different opportunities. I personally prefer the five minute time frame for this situation because it is so surgical. So here we have a 
entry point and an exit. Well above. Now here's the downfall of the strategy. Here we have what looks like it might be a good exit point if you were strictly on a DCA take profit averaging system. These will not be taken. It will only take exit points on the strategy itself. So this particular run on this coin could have exited for a profit here, but actually ended up taking more situations based upon the actual process. Things to be aware of when you pick this kind of strategy. And you can see this one is a bit of a long coin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days for this position to sell off for the profit. Twenty cents in twelve days. It's not a good return for breaking even. It's great because it did profit. It made money. 100% complete money. But it didn't break even. If you were using that trade alone to decide your monthly payments. Here we are out of trade. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine days out of trade. So you see here ADA, good coin, very profitable, long runs. BCH. BCH has been out of trade for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 days. 7 days out of trade. BTC, everybody's darling. Well, maybe not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. Eight days with no trades. That's not going to pay the bills. Not by itself. Same thing with the OS. ETH, probably be the same thing looking at the pattern I'm seeing. Chain link. As you can see, a lot of these coins just sit. But this is the difference between a surgical strategy and an aggressive accumulative strategy, like the savings account. Okay, this one's actually in a buy. 
stellar. And it's just waiting for the next step. Now notice I've got sideways breaker listed. And all this time, it doesn't take a sideways breaker position because there's no buy signals. The last sideways breaker position is here for this coin. So even with sideways breaker being in an aggressive way, I'm trying to get this market to move, it still is bound by the strategy. That is important. So look how long this ran. The beginning of K, the 4th of June until now, and it's still waiting. So it hasn't even sold off yet. It's only made three purchases for the entire period. So one month almost. Three purchases with the minimum purchase of $30. You're only looking at a 30 cent profit for this coin. This is not going to break even. It will give, it will go to a profit eventually, but unless it can really rack it up and you've got the position size to support it, it's not going to break even. Think about your position sizes. They are critical for this kind of a surgical strategy. Monero, everybody else's darling favorite that's supposed to be the next Bitcoin. Maybe it will be. But for right now, if I was to rely on it with this surgical strategy, unless I really put a large amount of capital into it, I'm not going to break even. So, good coin. Nice profit. It actually did profit. But so far, it hasn't done anything since. One shot a month doesn't really uh, pay the bills here. Not unless you're looking at a $1,000 shot that comes off with a reasonable amount of capital. And even then, $1,000 is only going to bring in $10. And it looks like it hasn't traded the entire month. Okay, so two trades for this coin. So let's say 10, 1,000 here, 1,000 on the other one. $20 profit for the whole month. By itself, it's not making money. Surgically speaking, this will rake in the money. Now, if you've got a budget like $10,000, you put $10,000 into this at 10%, $100 profit, one trade just made your break even. Something to think about, you will do it that way. Two profits, $200 a month, you're sitting nice. So, surgical strategies do require surgical thinking. Do not underestimate the amount of time you need to analyze these kinds of strategies. XRP, Ripple, okay, this shows you exactly what happens when things go wrong with the internet. This is factored into my 10% loss. Dirty trick, click, 
go back to where I was at and let it reload. Things to think about with these kind of strategies. The internet is not guaranteed to be a perfect little toy. It doesn't always work and sometimes things go bad. XRP. Nice little pop right there. Actually a pretty good one. But if it's the only one for the whole month, well... I'm breaking even that easily. XTZ. A lot of places have sticky mean words on this. Well, if you happen to be in a position with the sticky reward, this could be an added bonus. But it definitely looks like a long-term position. So your position size is certainly going to be a factor you are going to need to consider. Again, this demonstrates the difference between a take profit versus a strategy driven profit. If this were set to take profit, it would be out of the trade right here. But because this is set to strategy, it's been in the trade for almost the entire month. And it's accumulated two positions. So for 20 days. Two positions. Your positions had better be $500 each or more. If they're not. You're not going home with a profit. Not with a monthly overhead of $40. And now we start back over. Now let's go to the secondary coins. The 500 million. Sometimes these can give better opportunities because they're more volatile. But they're also higher risk. Things to think about. Things to be aware If you're looking for a strategy that you can put large position sizes in and not worry about it, this will definitely work. If you've done all your research and you figured out what your highest level of purchases are, so far I've only counted three. So if you have a $5,000 budget trading this off of one coin could bring in some serious profit every month. So if you've really done your due diligence and your research, this will definitely produce the results. We can go on all day through these coins, but you get the idea by now. Here's one that's in trade. Mm -hmm. This one's up to nine purchases. Now, this is the first coin that's actually climbed in a number of purchases with this strategy. So, let's take a look at this coin. Mm -hmm. Notice no sideways channels, no sideways breaker in all of this, because there's no buy signals. Very surgical here, very precise. A good example of a coin that would have gotten out on a standard take profit but because of the strategy driving the process not lining up it's not a good exit point for the strategy look at this 
this is a whopper of a jump. Again, if you had a take profit boundary here, this would be gold. Here's a sideways breaker finally at the end of May. So this thing already is a month in. Nine trades in a month. Minimum position size is that's 90 cents. I personally don't know if I would trade this coin. That's pretty steep for being in a trade this long. And it's still going. You would need a big capital in order to make a real genuine profit on this coin. Here's an example. Here's the deviation line. This drop below the deviation. If you had standard DCA as your buy method, it would have purchased here. But it didn't. It didn't purchase until here because here is where the strategy said to purchase. And it looks like at this rate, this is already going to be two months long. May. So May and June so far. We're going into April. Right here, well above the take profit, no confirmed selling point, no signal. So, basically two months and a week, roughly, for this whole trade, and it's still not even done yet. So, right here would be $90 just for two months. $90. That's not going to bring home the fact that you got $40 a month. You've already had $80 going out for a $90 position that's only going to bring in $0.90 cents at best when it sells. Think about your entry positions. If this was $100, each one, $900, even then $9 profit on this one coin, that's not going to get you very far. So your coin choices are just as important as your position sizes. I would rather have coins that are in and out in a day's time than a coin that sits there for two months doing nothing. At least a coin that has a turnaround of one or two days is going to stand a better chance statistically of making more than one trade a month. So, always do your diligence. Always check each and every single coin. Don't just blindly trade. There is no substitute for careful analysis, ever. None. Remember that when you're working and you're looking, don't take shortcuts. Personally, this strategy in my book is a blockbuster. It rocks it. And I'm going to show you why it rocks it. This strategy is one to follow. This strategy is one to learn. And it's one to take advantage of with the appropriate analysis. Let's go back to Black Thursday.
back to the beginning of a nightmare for a lot of people. Take a look at just how well this scene rocks it out. All of this chaos, all of this hideous mess, one position, and you go all the way down here, you get to here in May. I picked up a second position. This pulls off a 19% win, while everybody else is getting decimated in Black Thursday. For roughly two months, 19%. Now you put this down for $1,000 a position. That means $2,000 in there, you're looking at $380 pure profit. Now, you take off your overhead. I'm going to say $100 a month crudely. Just with that, you're still looking at $180 profit above your overhead. So this is where you really begin to see at the macro level just how good this strategy is. I don't have the capital to trade at this level, but somebody that does, they are sitting pretty. They are sitting real pretty. Same thing here. Boom, boom, bang. So just within this year so far, this thing could have brought in some stellar profits. I personally prefer the five minute mark because that fits my budget. It trades off faster and I get the best bang for what I can afford. If you can afford the 30 minute mark, you're going to get some good profits. If you can afford the 15 minute mark, you're going to get some good profits. Look at every single time frame, examine them, determine the best one for your particular budget and risk assessment that will get you to your break even point. For me, five minutes trading all the top 13 coins, it gets me there. It gets me there, it gives me some profit, and I do a good job. Second to the savings account, this three-step process is a stellar approach. Try it, test it, look it over, take time to learn the concepts and apply it to your trading on a daily basis. This is where you can take the combination of surgical and a combination of aggressive, put them together and get the best of the market at all times. Until next time.